Hey, that chuckle in the background, man. We we had to bring this man on board. Um, this dude is an incredible physician and author, best known for his. You know, we've seen him on on TV a lot too. But this dude is a world renowned, critical, critically acclaimed author. He's been on the show. He's one of our resident doctors. He has his new book, Mind Over Weight, Curb Cravings, Find Motivation, and Hit Your Number in Seven Simple Steps. It's out right now. I'm talking about the one and only Dr. Ian Smith that's on the line. Hey, hey. Uh, buddy, what's up? What's up? Hey, what's up, y'all? Sorry, I'm still laughing. That was so good. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Just lay off laughs> <the hook. laughs> everybody was quiet, and then, like, you had to say it again. Oh, and send me your cookies, too. <laughs> y'all didn't get it the first time? Dang, go on. We, we got we it. Did. We just, we we just let ignored him live. it. Hey, man, oh, you let it go. Okay, you let it go. Hey, this cookies, too. Shoot. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> you know, what they up? always ignore me, man. How you doing, man? Listen, I'm good, uh, I'm good man. I'm uh, sheltered in place like y'all. I miss seeing y'all in the studio. I can't wait for this to be over so I can see all my old friends again. But, uh, you know, we still going to make it happen. You know, you just got to adjust. That's all. You know, yeah. and, uh, and and speaking of that adjustment, Dr. Ian Smith is on the line, too. And so any questions you have, 888-742-3345. You know, people have been having to adjust to being at home. I'm at home with my daughter and... You know, before quarantine, I already started stacking up on, you know, beans, canned beans and, you know, some um, and some pastas and some fish and different things I knew I would need. Uh, popcorn, you know, different kind of snacks, a lot of fruit, you know, uh, garlic, red onions, all these different things. And didn't really factor in like when it's two people and normally when we eat lunch, we're eating lunch either at work or out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of times, most folks aren't eating breakfast at home either. You're eating it out on your way to work or, uh, you know, dinner usually takes place at home. And now Mm -hmm. I got two people. And so we're home all day. So she works upstairs and she'll come down and she's, she's snacking and I work downstairs and in between work and Zoom calls, I find myself just wandering in the kitchen because there's nowhere else to go. And I'm snacking and before I knew it, man, two, three weeks later, I was already at the point where I, I was saying, man, I need to really start, you know, trimming it down. Two, three weeks later, and I think a lot of the citizens could probably relate to this. It feels like a lot of us have already picking up weight and I'm having these extra cravings. Like yeah. I'm I'm I, I'm eating like I was in my 20s again. You know, <laughs> where you, you know, you just throw it down the trash <laughs> compactor and it just comes ah, out. You, you know what right, I mean? That's right. <laughs> no discrimination. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I know my stomach is like, dog, what are you doing to me right now? <laughs> you know, and so this is why I wanted to have you on, man. How can you help? How can this book help? Well, Mind Over Weight really is all about what you're talking about. Seriously. Um, you know, I've written a lot of diet books, put a lot of exercise plans out there. But Mind Over Weight really is about how you get your mind right. right. People have to understand If your mind is not in the game, I don't care how good of a plan you have. I don't care how good your intentions are. If your mind's not right, you are not going to get the level of success that you want. In fact, Chapter 4 is all about how you crush the cravings. And I explain to people that cravings are temporary, by the way. They only last about 15 or 20 minutes. So if you don't give in to a craving, it's actually going to go away. That's very different than hunger. Hunger is a physiological need of your body. Your body is saying, I need fuel, I need nutrition, I need energy. So in the book, I tell you, how do you crush your cravings? So I give you some swap outs. So if you can't last that 15 to 20 minutes, and I do give you some strategies in the book of how to do that, but okay. if you can't last those 15, 20 minutes, then I give you some swap outs. Like, for example, if you're craving salty and sweet, some cubed watermelon with some feta cheese sprinkled on top, uh, you're craving straight sweet, chocolate-covered strawberries and bananas, trust me, guys, they're easy to make. I do them all the time. They're so good. You bite into that chocolate and you get that, that fruit underneath it. It's delicious. But the book gives you all these different types of swap outs, edamame, uh, snacks, seaweed snacks. Also, this is why people are able to win because if you can at least go for this, these kind of items versus the high calorie, high processed ingredients, then you can do a lot better. Oh, okay. So I never knew that cravings. Man, who, who, who did that test? Like, well, because here's the deal. <laughs> Cravings are mediated by something called dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter, a chemical in your brain. So when you bite something you like or drink something you like and it's pleasurable, you release this dopamine in your brain. And then the dopamine spreads to the front of your brain and it says, hey, let, listen, let me remember 
how good it felt to eat that chocolate chip cookie, okay? So Mm -hmm. the next time you think about a chocolate chip cookie, you smell one or you see one, that dopamine gets released, and it says to you, go get it, go get it. Now, if you can stop yourself from going to get it, that sensation, that prompt, will go away in 15 or 20 minutes. Hmm. Hmm. So you think, Heather, like the homie, when he was reaching for that cookie, that was the dopamine telling him to go get it, go get it? (laughs) It was the greed. <laughs> Dr. Ian Smith, we were talking about my husband. I made some oatmeal and cooked some really good oatmeal and coconut cookies last night. And mm. I, the deal was you can have the ones that don't come out pretty. And okay. so it was a few, but he just started going for it. And he told me that he can't help it. He said it's the aromas in the house and they're just sitting right there and they're hot and soft. What does That's that right. even the mean? Dopamine, dopamine is flooding his brain. But let me tell you why hunger is different, though. Hunger is like this. When your car is low on oil, the oil light comes on. And no matter how many times you turn the car off and turn it back on, that oil light is going to come on until you put oil in the car. That's, that's hunger. It's not going away. Cravings are like when you get in the car and you get a prompt saying, do you want to connect your Bluetooth? And you don't do anything. Well, eventually that prompt goes away without you doing anything. So that's the difference between cravings and hunger. One is a, a need for your body to say, I got to have fuel. The other one says, man, I'm smelling something, thinking about something. I want to go get it because I know it's going to taste good. Mm. Uh, uh, Tracy, you huh. want to add to this? Yeah. Dr. Ian Smith, a lot of people are also f- giving themselves a lot of extra shame for gaining weight during this time. Personally, I think it's weird to use the word normal, but because we're under very like radical circumstances, it would make sense for why people get out of their routine. But can you speak on, because you said everything begins with mindset, how giving yourself grace, you know, before giving yourself a good diet, a good exercise is a prerequisite to this positive change in the body. Yeah, I tell people all the time, listen, no one's going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. And I never ask people to be perfect because that's unrealistic. What I say to people is let's take a few things and work on them a little bit at a time, right? Because I believe that small changes actually yield big results. So in the book, I teach you how to set goals, right? So the idea is you may say, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. Okay, fine. It's fine to say that, but now we've got to talk about how do you get there. What are the small milestones? What are the victories you can score off the scale? For example, can I exercise for 30 minutes straight? Can I climb two flights of steps consecutively? What studies have shown is when people are able to reach smaller milestones, it keeps their motivation, which is Chapter 1, it keeps their motivation intact so that when they do face some difficulty, when they do have a bad breakfast or a bad lunch, they don't totally throw their hands up in the air and say, you know, I totally messed up. I'm off the plan, they get right back into the saddle and go back at it. And so people can't be too hard on themselves. Yeah, we're quarantined. We're out of our routine. I'm out of my routine too. But my mindset is this, yo, I'm going to make the most out of this. When I finish this self shelter in place, I'm going to be tighter. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to have rested because we don't rest enough during our regular you know, life. I'm going to rest. So I think people should turn this around and say, how can I progress during the shelter in place rather than all the stuff that I'm missing. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to open up the phone lines and we're going to come back. If you're having problems or not even problems, you're trying to adjust to this, this new way of uh, life right now uh, when it comes to your diet and your, uh, and your exercise. And Dr. Ian Smith is here. Uh, and also this book is available online. So it's something great that you could be listening to right now. It's called Mind Over Weight, Curb Cravings, Fine Motivation, and hit your number in seven simple steps. I want to find out what those seven steps are up next. 888-742-3345. Call. Yeah, Soul Food. We talking about it. Dr. Ian Smith, you know, every, as long as I've known this dude, he's been in shape. You know, <laughs> I'm not saying it like a hater. I'm just saying it as, a, a, <laughs> as an observer. Uh, and the energy has always been right. And you're saying mind over weight, curb cravings, find motivations, and hit your number in seven simple steps. So we got a lot of people on the phone lines, uh, uh, Dr. Smith. And let, let's let's start with you D7. You just call me Dr. Smith? Is that okay? 
No. Well, so formal. It's either Ian or Dr. Ian, but don't call me Dr. Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. Like <laughs> in office yeah, you took total, total offense. I was just trying to get variation in how we communicate. That's all. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to be too, you know, repetitive. You know, that's just some radio shit, you know. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> There you go. There you okay. go. We family, Kiri, family. I know, I know, man. But you know, I try to keep the professionalism up. You know, I'm whack. All right. Uh, so, so I'm gonna write down these steps. And citizens, like we got Mike in Virginia, Jane, North Carolina, all these different people on the lines. Let's write down these steps together. Okay. So the seven easy steps. What are they? Okay, Sway. Before you get there, let me just say this. Um, before I forget this, the first ten people that hit me up on Instagram, they DM me, I'm going to send them a copy of Mind Over Weight. My Instagram is at Dr. Spell it out, Ian Smith, I-A-N Smith. Follow me, send me a DM. The first 10 now, I'm going to send you a copy of Mind Over Weight. So let's go over the seven steps. First step is unlock your motivation. That's the number one issue people have. They can't find their motivation. They don't know how to stay motivated when they're on a plan. And my answer to you is you actually have motivation. Even though you can't find it, it's in there. For some of us, unfortunately, it's deeper and buried than others. But Chapter 1 teaches you how to find internal motivators and external motivators. So there's a list, two lists in the book. And external motivator means something like this. I'm motivated because I want to go on vacation and I want to look good on the beach. So I'm motivated to do good now so that I can get the praise on the beach. That's external validation, external motivation. Internal motivation says, you know what, my doctor says I'm pre-diabetic, and if I continue to eat this way and not lose weight, I'm going to have a really horrible, you know, difficult life. And so I'm internally motivated because I want to do better for me. I want to do better. You know, I'm, the, the, the process of it is making me better. So the, chapter one is about unlocking your motivation. That's step one. Okay. Step two is how do you set the right goals? So many people do not know how to set goals. They think just saying, I want to lose 30 pounds, you know, is the goal. No, that's not the goal. That's just the beginning. You got to be specific. You want to say, you got to say, I want to lose a certain amount of weight over a certain period of time. And then you got to break that down. You got to go week by week. And in the book, I show you how to take your big goal and break it down to smaller milestones. Because when you hit those small milestones, then you become more motivated to go to the next one. So that's number two. Okay. Step number three, how do you choose the right plan? Listen, I've written lots of diets, you know that, but every plan is not for everybody. Like, you know, it, it, there are different plans that will fit you. Just because your friend or your spouse or your coworker lost weight on the plan doesn't mean it's the right one for you. Mm-hmm. Is the food accessible? Do you like the food? Can you stay on it for the long term? All these factors I talk about in that chapter, so you decide at the end of the day what is right for you. Step four, crush the cravings. We talked about that a little earlier, but that takes you through all the different swaps you can do when you're at home. If you have a craving for sweet, salty, or savory, it says eat these foods for the craving rather than grab a bag of chips. Step number five. Now, this is what I like about step number five is that so many people don't understand that you got to boost your confidence, right? I mean, Boosting your confidence is huge. So I take you through steps. And here's the, here's the thing. I was talking to somebody. They took, there's a self-esteem assessment in that chapter. They took it and they were like, I didn't realize I had low confidence. You know, because they're, you know, they're, they're, they mm-hmm. have swag. You know, they're very out front. But when they took the self-esteem assessment, they realized they had low self-esteem. And then I give you all types of confidence boosters. Step six, build a winning environment. This is life in general, by the way how you associate with other people, who you associate with, be around positive people, how you control your environment, all these things I go through. And there are things that people don't even think about when they think about their environment. They don't realize all of the negative influences that are impacting them while they are trying to do what they're trying to do. And lastly, fix your relationship to food. Food is not medicine. Food is not your best friend. Food is not the answer to emotional distress. And so I I allow you to see how you may be using food in the wrong way and show you other things you can do rather than turn to food to deal with those issues. Seven steps. There it is, man. Uh, damn, man, round of applause. That was great. You remember, you memorized them, so we know you actually wrote the book. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's go well to the, uh, the, the self-esteem assessment. On what criteria did you build this formula or this process? Like, is this just due to your own experiences, what you know, or... Did you research ways to uh, do self-esteem assessments? How did you come to these, you know, these, that? Yeah, so this is an established survey. It's called the Rosenberg Self-Assessment Scale. Uh, uh-huh. So it's not something I did. It's a, it's a tried-and-true method uh, that's been around for a long time, but it's used a lot by therapists. It's used 
by motivational speakers. So it's it's an assessment tool that psychologists and psychiatrists use all the time. It's on uh, page 131 is where it starts. It's called the Rosenberg. So if you don't have the book, you can look it up, too, online, called the Rosenberg Self-Esteem Scale. Okay, and so the first 10 people that, like citizens, if you tuned in, the first 10 people to DM Dr. Ian Smith, and you spell out Dr. Ian, I-A-N, Smith, DM him. Send him a direct message right well, now. you know he already flooded with ten, more than 10 I people. I hope so. Yeah, man, I mean, we'll just see, man. Dr. Ian Smith, though. Okay, so <laughs> go ahead and DM him, and he's giving away these books. So I, I like for you guys to get free stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. We got a bunch of questions. Um Bobby, you want to talk about the cravings, right? Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. what's up, Slay? What's up, Heather B? Dr. Hey. Smith? Hey. What up, bro? Hey, I I just had a question because sometimes, I, I mean, I, how did you cope with that number or that, that uh, amount of time, 15 to 20 minutes? Because, I mean, if I'm craving some, I'll, I'll ignore it. And, I mean, I, I, I do a Shanti workout. Like, I'll go do something like that. Or I'll jump <laughs> on the – sometimes my relaxation time, I'll jump on the video game. But, I mean, 15, 20 minutes later – I'm still wanting that damn cookie or whatever I'm craving. You know, I mean, I don't know where that time frame came from. I'll, I'll wait like an hour and I'll still want something. You know what I mean? Well, because two things. One, that's true. One, it comes from how long the chemical message lasts. So your dopamine in your brain and how it's being active in your brain will typically last 15 to 20 minutes. Now, the reason why the craving is coming back is because you're still thinking about it, right? Remember what I said? Yeah. If you think about it, then you start releasing that dopamine again, and then you start telling your body to go satisfy your, this, this craving. So you've got to distract yourself, and that's why in that chapter I talk about all kinds of distractive techniques so you're not actually thinking about the cookie. You're not thinking about, you know, those French fries. If you think about it, it's going to come back. That's, just, that's why it's a chemical uh, a messaging kind of situation. Wow. Hey, 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 Bobby, uh, okay. you should DM them real quick so you can see if you can get a free book, bro. Oh, I appreciate it, Sway. Yeah, I will. Right, go ahead. You'll so go I have a question for um, Dr. Ian. Hey, Dr. Ian, what's up? It's Heather. So do you think that um, cooking sometimes takes – so I did have a craving for something sweet. So that's why I decided to make cookies rather than go out and buy them because I, what I noticed with me, if I want a craving, if I make it, I won't eat as much as if I go buy it. Like if I want mm. cookies and I go buy it, I'll eat the whole pack. But I baked like, I don't know, 30 cookies last night and I ate two. That is, oh my goodness, Heather, you are so correct. One of the things that I say in Crush the Cravings chapter, for example, is you want to get rid of a craving, brew tea, actually brew it, and then drink it. The process of brewing it, by the way, number one, you'll probably drink less of it, but it makes the craving that you're, let's say you were craving something sweet, it makes that craving go away. So when you're cooking something, Mm. the process of cooking is somewhat satisfactory because you're smelling, mm. you're doing. And so when the finished product comes out, even though it's going to be good, you know it's going to be good, you still don't have the hankering to get all of, you know, eat all that you thought you would have eaten had you not gone through the process. So, yes. And that's wow. why I say in the book, take yourself through process. Be active. Be engaged. That, that will stagnate that craving that's making you try to go do something. Wow, right. that's great. Okay. You know, that's funny you say that because a lot of times mm-hmm. I just smell the food. So I don't have to eat the food. And I I, I just thought that was <laughs> something in away. my yeah, yeah, and it goes away. Um, Ricky in Detroit, you want to make a comment? What up, though? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, go ahead. Ricky, you there? Ricky, 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 Ricky. Okay, Ricky. Ricky's yep. not there. Okay. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ricky okay. <laughs> Yo. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Al, what up, baby? Al, you good? What's up, Al? Hey. Yeah, what's good? What's good? What's poppin'? What up, y'all? What up, oh, though? What up, though? I guess that's Detroit in the building. That's all D. Yeah, that's all okay. D. Oh, we, we here. We everywhere, baby. You feel me? I sense it. <laughs> I sense it. Uh, so what's your question? My question is more so about black seed oil because I've been taking it recently. Uh, I want to know more about the benefits of black seed oil. How does it help the body? And also about cleansing, certain things that we need to do to cleanse. I want to know, like, what is the certain things we need to do? Okay. Um, can I just uh, – let me talk to me about the cleansing first, then I'll go to black seed oil, okay? So uh, right. cleansing, the best way to cleanse is to do a food cleanse. Like – Eating foods that naturally help you to detoxify, things that are high in fiber, uh, citrus like lemons, 
Uh, broccoli is great for cleansing. You want more fiber. That is a natural way uh, to do cleansing. And also, by the way, you want to make sure that you are not eating processed ingredients. Things that have a bunch of chemicals in them, absolutely no good. So you really have to be careful. Don't do things like colonics and things that you put into your system or supplements. Do cleansing the natural way through certain types of foods, okay? That's, that's first of all. Okay. Secondly, the black seed oil uh, is good. There have been some studies on it. Uh, it comes from the the fruit of the sativa plant. Uh, the good thing about black seed oil is that it has antioxidants and it has anti-inflammatory properties. So antioxidants right. are things that fight free radicals, and anti-inflammatories are things when you kind of have too much inflammation in your body. So black seed oil is good, no doubt about it. Just make sure you're getting good quality from it, good quality of black seed oil, uh, and just follow the instructions about how much you should be taking. Hey, Al. Okay, I use it. Uh, Go yeah. ahead. What up, dog? <laughs> well, that's all the D. That's the, when anytime somebody say that, you gotta know they from the D. They only and only people from the D can say it like that. What up though? Yeah, uh, yeah we, got, we got we got a certain genus and choir about it. It's a certain style we got to it. You feel me? Well, let me try it, Al. Can I try it? Say say my name. Oh, uh, what up though, Sway? What's good? What up though, Al? I'm chilling. <laughs> See, see, you there, you, you there, you there. You, you need to come to the D, baby. We, okay. we he still got too you, much man. Oakland on it. Yeah, yeah, I put some Oakland on that shit, damn it. Let him hey, you know. Gotta let, you got to let it be smooth. Like, what up, though? What up, though? Okay, all right, I'm learning, man. Hey, um, Al, hey, you- I, hey DM Dr. Uh, Dr. Ian right now, man. Get you that free book, okay? Okay, I'm gonna holler at him. I appreciate him. I appreciate you, Sway. I've been up on you ever since, uh, ever since this or that, man. What up, though, man? <laughs> what up, though, man? What up, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sway, you that was better. You was better, good. Sway. You gotta say it in the mind of town business. How y'all be okay, saying? Okay, how say town people, business? Okay, how, uh, that's how okay. they do that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Al, I'm gonna let you get another question. Oh, yeah. Um, now, what my question is about um, electric foods, because I've also been learning. Um, I've been reading up on Dr. Sebi a lot lately. Um, I'm starting to learn that we're like um, a, we 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 kind of like harness electricity. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, and it's certain foods that build built that electric part of part in us or whatnot. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Well, you know, I'm not, just to be quite frank, uh, I'm not well-versed in electric foods. It's kind of like a new kind of concept that people are bouncing around. And the, it's all about alkalinity, uh, whether something is basic or not, or acidic. Um, and so, you know, my overall feeling about it is that I think a lot has to be still fleshed out about it. I mean, it's not, you can't make claims based um, um, whether or not a food is electric or not. I, I, it's just not there yet. I noticed there's this one guy who talks about it a lot, like you said, but there's just not many, there's not, not much research on it. And I, when I don't have research on things, I just kind of, you know, I don't make claims about it, but I think more has to be done and looked into about it. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I wish I could have a better answer for you, but it's just there's not much out there in a, in a scientific way that addresses uh, electric, what are called electric foods. Now, now yeah, uh, I, can I, I, can I add it. this? Can I add this to Al? There was, yeah. there was a doctor um, that we had on the show a couple of weeks ago that, that spoke to it a little bit um, named Dr. J. Otis Williams. And I posted it on my on my on my uh, on the YouTube channel, Sway's Universe. You can even see a clip of him on my Instagram. Look him up. Dr. Oh, Dr. J. Otis Williams. He goes into it a little bit. You know, like Dr. Ian said, though, you got to do your own research. You go go to multiple sources, and then you got really you're gonna have to assess for yourself what works for you. Um, but look him up, Doctor J. Otis Williams. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cause now, what up, I, though, I, Al? I, I gave up beef and pork. It's been about like 15 years. A dear friend of mine, a long time ago, his <laughs> name Buster. Rest in mm-hmm. peace, Buster. He uh, caught his first heart attack. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so that that inspired that you to change. Yeah, that that and, and when he 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 was still alive at that point, you know, and from that point on, I was like, no way, this time it's time to give it up because he was only forty two. Oh, oh wow! 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 Yeah, shit, damn, yeah, man. Wow! Uh, I'm thirty eight, thirty seven. 
That and that's his why, Tracy. Um, yo, yeah. Al, thank you, thank you. You're a citizen, bro. What up, Sweet though? Morning. Thank you. I appreciate you. What up, though? You always be fam in Detroit. You always welcome here, baby. Thank you, family, <laughs> man. I you appreciate that. that. Right there, yo, that's so big right that's now. Big. Sway, you're a general. You're <laughs> not thank just you. a citizen. You're a general, you, baby. There you go. Salute, family. What up, though? Ah, uh, I like that. You always good. <laughs> All yeah, right. There you go. Okay, super citizen right there. You heard him. Sway put C Sway put the D on it instead of the T H. He was going, What up though? It's yeah. though. Uh, it's though. Oh, with a D. Okay. With a D. I did I came I came around in the end though when he gave yeah, me my you general. Did. You, you took the T H off of it. Yeah, man. Love the D. Yo, Doctor Ian, if you ever go to the D, call me. Uh we got Gwen on the line. Quinn, good morning. What's up, Gwen? Good morning. Hey, so good morning. So what's going on? Um, we got Dr. Ian on. Well, my question is, um, well, my issue is that at nighttime, I can doze off to sleep and wake up even in the middle of the night, and it's like I'm starving, and I want something. Usually it's something like salty, or it's like I was turned into a carb addict or something, and I was wondering, is there any way to, like, jumpstart myself or whatever to get rid of this eating at night like this is crazy? Well, well, you can. Eat, I, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of eating snacks at night. The snacks got to be 150 calories or less, and you got to do mm-hmm. things like you know if you want salty things like edamame, where you're getting the salt, but you're all it's very salty, but but it's it's natural salt, but you're also getting mm-hmm. you know fiber, you know, because what fills you up, by the way, is fiber. Fiber and protein are the best ingredients to have in a snack. It makes you feel full longer than three Fs. And so I don't okay. mind you getting up and having it, but you got to keep it to 150 calories or less, and you got to do things like, you know, you, feta cheese. you got to do things that are salty but, but also give you vitamins. That's the key. When you just – you don't reach for a bag of potato chips. There's no nutritional value whatsoever in potato <laughs> chips. Uh, and another thing, right. y'all, is that people should exercise before they go to sleep, okay? Because yeah, okay. when you – yeah, even just a small exercise. On my Instagram page, by the way, I have three-minute workouts. I'm telling you all right now, you could do it right in your house, and you're going to have a hard time keeping it through three minutes. I mean, only three minutes, but and no machines, no nothing. But when you exercise before you go to sleep, you start increasing your fat burn so that while you're sleeping, you are burning your fat for energy rather than doing burning food that you don't have. So please, you guys, pick up your at-home workouts. Check it out. Uh, on my Instagram page, you'll see a lot of those exercises. Three minutes, Dr. Ian. That's, That's it. it. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you welcome. I, I yesterday, yesterday I posted some plie squats. Uh, and the day before that, I posted uh, some ice skaters. Trust me, you do the ice skaters and hit me up, hit my DM up and ask me whether or not, tell me whether or not you were able to get through all the ice skater sessions. Trust me. Huh. It's okay. great. I, I could do three minutes. Uh, I'm about to say <laughs> straight. Go. Like, okay. That's my okay. kind of gym. Yeah. <laughs> Um, on that point, Dr. Ian Smith, would it also make sense to take multivitamins, different supplements at night since your body is restoring itself the most while you sleep? Yeah, well, that's a good, great question, by the way. So the question about supplements, though, is whether or not they are bioavailable, which means are they biologically available to us, right? So with supplements, you don't get all of what's in there, right? So you may have a 150% of vitamin A, but your body may only absorb 20% of it, right? So it's not as effective. Most people, believe it or not, even people who don't eat great, most people are going to consume all that they need through food to get the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. However, if you're someone who, you know, eats a lot of fast food, you don't think you're eating right, one multivitamin typically will do it. You don't need a whole bunch of supplements. I know supplement takers aren't going to like to hear this, but a lot of those supplements are excessive, honestly. They don't, you know, and those supplements aren't as good as getting it through your food. So I would say to people, when do you take the supplements? It, taking it at night or in the middle of the day doesn't really matter. Um, but if you do take it right before you go to sleep, um, the belief is that it could, while you're restoring, be able to use and process it better. The jury's still out. Gotcha. Okay, T- Tamika's on the line from Delaware. Go ahead, Tamika. Dr. Hey, Tamika. Ian. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Go hi. Um, my question was, what do you do or what would you be your recommendations if you try these diets and you still are not losing weight? That's been my situation. I bought your first book. I filed it to a T, didn't lose any weight. And it's not, I've tried multiple diets. It's just not working. Well, first of all, are you are you completing all the program, the whole program of all the different plans you've tried? 
I have. I even went to, like, I'm in Delaware. I, I've even gone to UPenn and NYU to kind of get some metabolic, you know, testing yes. done just to see if there was anything going on. The only thing that came back was my vitamin D was a little low. So they asked okay. me to up my vitamin D, but, you know, I just. But no thyroid I problem? To lose weight. I'm sorry? No thyroid problem? Um, I have a goiter, but I do not have it been diagnosed with hyper or hypo. Well, hold on for a second. You have a goiter, but you don't have. They haven't diagnosed you for hypo or hyper. Yep, I get it checked every year, and they yeah. they said See, you know my levels are fine. I mean, obviously, I can't diagnose you over the phone like this. However, someone like yourself, and I'm I'm taking at face value that you have tried to do all these different programs and you stuck to the programs. That and I don't say this very often. That says to me that there's something definitely metabolic going on, something hormonal going on, something hormonally is making your body hold on to weight or you have a really low metabolism. I mean, really low. And that happens. It's called BMR, your basal metabolic rate. Now, what I would say to you is, I don't know what your exercise regimen is, but you got to try HIIT, H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training, which means periods of high exertion with periods of rest. First of all, HIIT exercises you can do half the time and burn double the calories of, let's say, a regular gym workout. So, Look up HIT, H-I-I-T, go to my Instagram page. I put some HIT exercises on there for my DVD, and send me a DM. I'll send you a full workout of the HIT uh, exercises, but I think that could actually help tip the scale to move your metabolism. Hey, let us I know. to DM me. Thank you yeah. so much. I've been waiting to talk to someone about this for a couple of years now. Thank you guys so much. Oh, that's nice. Absolutely. Smith. That's dope. You, you're, a, you're a citizen to me. Good Slain luck, too. Mike has been a on the line. With like a little square, and I, I, I was able to hook it up to the car. What in the? Huh? Mike, you, Mike, on. you good, Mike? <laughs> Mike, hey, Mike, you Mike. live on air. I'm Mike, you live on air. Lady shit now, man. Mike, Mike, you hey, live Mike. on air. Mike, Mike, Mike. you live on air. Mike. Michael, yo, 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 what's up, man? I love you, <laughs> man. I didn't <laughs> even know who you were, Swayze. I got a, I just bought this truck in September, and it had satellite radio in it. That's how uh-huh. I got on to Sway in the morning. I'm like, God, man, I love you, man. And oh, I, man. I don't even. Huh? Go ahead, Mike. Michael. We lost Mike. Mike. Oh, wow. damn. This dude I'm has been on hold out. forever. And it's... He was on hold Mike for a long time. sounds nice. Check one. Check one. He My was on Mike hold for sound... a long time. Yeah, I was trying to get Sweet. him because tell him to call back, yo. He sounds funny. He smells. <laughs> yeah. I got this new damn truck. Yo, Michael, <laughs> man. Hey, Michael in Virginia, call us back. I don't know what happened to your line, brother, but call us back, man. Wow, this funny. is um uh, pretty good, man. You got you getting a lot of calls as usual. Doctor Ian Smith is uh, online with us, um, and you know he has a series of books that you could used to your advantage but his his current book is mind overweight curb cravings uh, find motivation and hit your number in seven simple steps it's out now and uh do you have an audio book to it as well yeah you know what i actually read the audio book so if you don't mind my voice i read it this is a small book guys it's only seven chapters at the end of each chapter there's an action plan believe me when i tell you it's a game changer this will when you finish this book and those who've already read it have have dm me and, and hit me up on social they're like dr ian i was thinking about things i never thought about trust me when i tell you send me a dm like i said at dr ian smith spell the doctor out i a n smith and yo sway once a month i should come out and just answer questions how about that just once a month let's about do anything. it uh, uh, wow. let's do it let's do it man okay. um, i like kelly I'm set it up yeah, let Kelly set it up, um, and we could definitely, because this is some of the most useful information we can give. Surely we're going to talk about, you know, celebrities beefing and all that stuff, but this right here sticks to the ribs. No pun intended. Uh, Amita, Amita's on the line. <laughs> Sway on good, fire Galloway. today, Dr. That was a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that a bar. It's Friday. He, he it made up for what up, though. It made up for what up. You're right. <laughs> send me your cookies. Send me your cookies. <laughs> That's right. You're two, for two. You're two for two right now. You're two for two. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. <laughs> <laughs> and the remembrance. Quar- quarantine jokes, baby. They always work for me, man. Um, Amita, Amita, good morning. What up? Good morning. How are you? I was trying to call in. I'm doing really good. I'm like, actually, I'm doing a lot better than what doctors projected for me to be because I'm supposed to be on a walker, but I'm not. Um, And I have fibromyalgia, and I'm only 44 right now, but they told me I was supposed to be on there since I was 38. 
and I have kids, so that's not an option. Um, I'm trying to lose weight because I've been on over 40 pills and medications for like over seven years, and it's extremely hard to lose the weight. And I was trying to find out if there's something that you could help me with. Yeah, can I make a recommendation? Once again, you know, it's it's hard to get into the whole medical history with you, but I know your your movement may be limited given the fibromyalgia right now, but you got to try. Have you tried intermittent fasting? Um, I actually have tried the intermittent fasting, but because my system is compromised because I've had gastric bypass, uh-huh. it's really hard to do because I get dehydrated extremely quick. And so well, you can taking drink. in fluids but, and trying to drink down as much as I'm supposed to during intermittent fasting doesn't actually work for me. So I get really lightheaded and I black out. And I do have blackouts due to um, I get I don't know if it's called grandma migraines, but I've had one where to the point where I passed out for five hours. They didn't know if I was having a seizure or a stroke. Yeah, so grandma, grandma my seizures, body but, does not. Grandma refers to seizures, but can I just say this? When you do intermittent fasting, if you're doing it the right way, you can drink as much as you want. So you 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 you, you right. don't have to be dehydrated. When you're, intermittent fasting is just controlling what you eat and when you eat it, not what you're drinking. Okay. You know, so I think. Listen, I wrote a book called Clean and Lean, and it takes you through the steps of intermittent fasting. And you may want to try an aggressive fast because you break up your time, your 24 hours between a, a feeding window and a fasting window. You may want to try like a 14-hour okay. fasting window and a 10-hour feeding window. Start with that. But you can drink. So the dehydration is not an issue. But you, I think, you know, and all the studies have shown that not only will it help you lose weight, it reduces body fat, uh, it's good for insulin resistance. Some of the things that could be preventing you from losing weight, IF may tackle it. So please check out Clean and Lean. You can get a digital copy right now. And um, send me a DM. If you have questions, I'll try to help you out. We've got a big Facebook group called Cleaner, Get Leaner. 30,000 people are doing okay. it together. So, you know, keep up with me. All okay. Right. Well, thank you so very much. Yeah, I did DM you as well. So, okay. And then I also okay. hit you on the the Facebook so to make sure that I'm on there. Okay. But thank you for, for being able to come out and do this. And thank you, Sway, for putting him on. Absolutely, Amita. And good luck to you. You sound like you're doing well. You're already beating the odds. Keep the faith. We're in your corner, okay? Well, thank you. You have a blessed day, and you all stay safe. All right, you too. Yo, Dr. Ian, man, you know, we got James in South Carolina, Dimitri in Detroit. What up, though? Um, Jay in North Carolina. (laughs) Um, To everybody from Detroit. Give James a holler. Ah, Dimitri's from Detroit. Hey, Dimitri, what up, though? What up, though? Yeah. Yeah, me. Hey, uh, so you got a quick question? Yeah, I was wondering if you had any advice for uh, us truck drivers out here as far as working out or eating and stuff. Because usually we eat whatever we can reach trying to keep get the road, keep heading down the road. So, you know, we start off small, leave big. So trying to see if you had any good advice for things to snack on and stuff while we're driving. Yeah, so, you know, I would do a lot of raw veggies uh, and hummus. I know people, like, when they hear the word hummus, they think it's one of these fee-fee-foo-foo foods. It's not. Hummus is delicious. comes in all different flavors. I love a red pepper hummus, but hummus has a nice little salty, savory taste. You take some, some cucumbers, some baby carrots. You take some peppers. It is delicious. So I would snack more on things like that. Almonds are awesome. Any kind of almonds or walnuts or pecans, nuts have a lot of uh, monounsaturated fats uh, and a lot of uh, vitamin E, so that's good for you. Uh, And lastly, I would say is that, you know what, one of the things about truck drivers is you guys take breaks. I know you do. There are exercises you can do right outside, 10 minutes of exercises. Once again, I, I know I keep saying this, but on my Instagram, I show you guys exercises that require no equipment, none, zero. It requires just a watch to keep track of the time because you got to do it in, within a certain amount of time, and that will make a big difference. Trust me, when you see those exercises, get out your car, get out your truck, get to the ground, and do it. Boom, ready to go. All right, man. Good luck to you, Dimitri. What up, though? All right, all right. Thanks. What up, all though? Right. Talk to yeah. y'all later, man. <laughs> okay. Yo, they can't resist it, man. That's like catnip for people from Detroit. All you yeah. got to do is say, what up, though? <laughs> okay. They know you brought this, man. Oh, okay. Hey, Jay, what they say in North Carolina? Same thing. What up, though? 
<laughs> yeah, I see how it was though. It's North yeah, Carolina, it's a little, little bit back. It was a little lean induced. Uh, Jay, what's your question? Well, I didn't have a question in general. I I, I actually got on hold before the doctor got on. Oh, okay. uh, in particular, I, I I can ask. Uh, how does he feel about fasting in general? So me, I fast once a month. Uh, usually about three to five days a month to try to help get those things that need to get processed inside of my digestive tract. And how, how does he feel as far as it, it being healthy? I mean, I've heard people fasting longer than a week, and then I've heard people, you know, fasting as long as like a month. I, I mean, I can say from a fasting perspective, you know, after three to four days, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the gym, I'm hooping, I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff, seemingly on an empty stomach. Yeah, I got so there's a difference between fasting and intermittent fasting, two very different concepts. Fasting is straight up not eating anything, uh, typically for at least 24 hours or more, right? That's just straight up no food. You can drink on, when you fast, but no food whatsoever. Intermittent fasting, the word intermittent means occasional. So it means you're fasting than eating, fasting than eating. From a medical standpoint and a health standpoint, it is much safer and more effective to do intermittent fasting. Because, listen, your body needs fuel, just like your car. And so, you know, you take your car on E, eventually your car is going to conk out. Same thing with your body. I mean, even though you may feel good and look good, your body is screaming for nutrients. Our body needs fuel, simple as that. And so I understand people do fasting for religious purposes, and so that's a whole different situation. But in general, when you need to choose between not going out food for long periods of time versus intermittent fasting – Intermittent fasting all day long, all day long. Uh, well, well, well in, in particular to fasting, it, it's not that I don't eat no food. I was introduced to this juicer. Um, it's called an emasticating juicer. Mm -hmm. And I actually juice throughout my fast. So I'll juice, and then I'll drink water, and then I'll also take my supplements. So my supplements actually replaces the meals that I would actually have. So I'll, I'll drink one to two juices throughout the day. And then, you know, since the juice is concentrated, I also drink water with the juices. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you know, it, it's it's like trying to find a good balance in how many days to fast. And then, yeah, but see, you know. But, see, but here's the point, though. The point is you're actually not doing what the classic fast is then. That's different. You're, you now add a new element. If you're juicing, you're still getting all those plant nutrients, those phytonutrients, and you have, they, right, it has right. calories. That's very different right. than someone who is classically fasting. So the way you're describing it, a juice fast is different than a, just a straight-up old-fashioned fast. So gotcha. juice fasts are different, obviously. You're still getting nutrients. You still may be lacking some of the vitamins, you, which you're saying you're making up with supplements. That is a safer way to do it. I'm still not a big proponent of doing it for weeks on end, but if you did it for a few days, I don't think you're going to do much damage. That's what's up. Okay. That's what's up. Hey, man, thanks for your call, Jay, man. You be safe this weekend, okay? Hey, appreciate you, Sway, Heather, Tracy. Hey. Y'all be easy. Be safe out there. You All too, right. Family. Thank you, man. Dr. Ian Smith, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, much love to you all. Stay safe. I yes. can't wait to see you all again when we're back in the studio. And everyone listening, let's make this thing happen. All you got to do is hit me up on Instagram at Dr. Ian Smith. Spell the doctor out, I-A-N Smith, and uh, I'll take care of you. Okay, uh, check your Let's DMs go. real quick. You got at least 10? Uh, I got nine. I need one more. Okay, he needs one more. <laughs> you need to be able to give away a free book. All Send right, me some so... cookies on my DM. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love that. All right, cool, Much man. Much love, y'all. Right. Thank you, brother. Take care. Right. Take man, care. Dr. See you. <laughs>